know? I mean, sometimes it's cool to have a laptop on stage. A few years later, it won't be cool to have a laptop on stage. Back right. in the 90s, having a computer at all was, was not cool, and you're supposed to wear flannels and have long hair and, and play guitars, you know? And, you know, back in the 90s, we were still playing with synths because that's what we liked. As far as I'm concerned, you do what, what feels right to you. You do what speaks to you. You use whatever tools you need to get what's in your head out there to people. And if that happens to be trendy or not, then you know, it gives a shit. I mean, I, my influences were, you know, I think I first heard Dreaming of Me, Depeche Mode, like back in the 80s, and that was a huge influence because the radio was engulfed with John Mellencamp, he's easy talk. You know, and so, or the Sparks and Devo, like, um, I remember playing a Devo record and my cousin freaking out on me because he thought it was just the worst music ever, and if you weren't listening to Ozzy and Randy Rhodes, you know, you were like a fag. <laughs> So now you can make your own records on your laptop. You don't even have to go to a studio. Well, yeah, even as a filmmaker, right. you really don't need like some big, you know, company backing you up in order to express what your interests are without having to rely on someone to go, well, gee, I don't know if that's going to sell or if that's going to work. I mean, you can really pretty much the whole DIY, the whole punk rock approach. Um, but it's not opera, you know. It isn't. It isn't a baroque string quartet. You, know? you don't have to go to school for four years or whatever, to actually be able to do these sorts of things, which is why it makes it accessible to normal people. Using one of these, you know, the Apple. <clears throat> A couple software sense and you're ready to, to go. It's like the electronic version of punk rock do-it-yourself, really. What we're running here is Ableton Live, um, which is a performance-based sequencer, originally developed as a DJ tool back in the day, but is now been you find it in all sorts of applications and more and more rock bands are starting to use it, certainly industrial bands and electronic bands. Gone are the days when if you wanted to use a sequencer you basically start up the computer and then you play to the computer and and you're basically the slave. Um, this software is designed to let you be more in control of what's going on. Um, so the computer is really a part of the band but the computer is not driving the whole show, the computer is is following us, so the, the master-slave relationship has changed around a bit. <clears throat> one of these, and you can get one of these for like, you know, 70 bucks. Put it in your USB, use it for your, all your MIDI impl implementation, and that's it. Here's your band, right there. <laughs> Anyone can get a, you know, a workable workstation for really under a grand. They don't have to do it through an Apple which might set them back, but <clears throat> they're getting cheaper by the day, faster by the day. This has been built and perfected over about five years or so, so it's been one piece added here and one piece added there. If I kept track of how much money I've spent on this, as opposed to how much I've made using it, it would be really depressing, so I just don't do the accounting. Yeah, but if you compare it to the old days where people would have to buy all this stuff in real hardware, you know, form, it sets you back 20, 30,000 bucks or more, depending. You can do everything now for, I'd say, just even a flat grand. It'll get you in the door, get you start working on music. It's really not that expensive. Got a credit card, and there you go, you're off. Um, also using Reason, there are a number of technologies that let you interconnect these various software applications. Um, so the same thing Scott's using over there to run his drums and other things I'm running here. So I met this guy out in LA who is a real tech head who introduced me to Reason. And at first when you look at it, it's kind of intimidating if you're someone that's not a big tech person and you can go through all the books to figure it out. But it's really user friendly, it's actually really simple and the price is, is cheap. You can get an old power book for a few hundred bucks that would do everything you needed to do. Um, to start playing music. You don't need the, the latest uh, you know, dual-core Intel-based Mac to, to actually start making music. That's kind of a common trap that many people, including myself, get caught in, is that you need the latest and greatest tools. And the fact is that people are making rock and roll with whatever they had available. That's kind of what rock and roll is about. So you could get your old five-year-old power book that you steal from your father or your brother or something and get right to work. And, Stop making excuses about not having the latest shiny toy. <laughs>